these don't feel like horror films. They feel like they're just really good movies with horror elements like around the script and stuff. So. Here. My name is James. My name is Blaze. And never have I ever seen a tale of two sisters. Tale of Two Sisters is directed by Kim Ji Woon, and it's about a family that is haunted by the tragedies of deaths within the family. Wow, what a vague <laughs> synopsis. That sure is for this movie. <laughs> this movie is actually far more complicated than the plot synopsis that IMDb gave us is willing to give up. So at least I have to say they let you on to the fact that there is some M. Night Shyamalan style twists in this film. And if you have heard anything about this film, you definitely heard that there are twists in this movie that will shock you and really shock you to the core because there's no way that you could guess the kind of style twist. This is definitely a film that many people say you need to watch twice to see it. And I have to say, First off, I definitely need to watch this film a second time. This was only my first viewing. Like you said, it was your first viewing. It was also my first viewing. And I feel like I was thoroughly confused throughout this film about really what was going on. I'm not ashamed to say it, <laughs> but I will enjoy this film probably way more on the second viewing, but I didn't, you know, I didn't not appreciate this movie like i definitely appreciate this film for what it was i thought it was very well done but we're not here to talk about what i thought about the movie i'd love to know what you thought about this film james well uh you pretty much said it it's definitely a movie i'm gonna need to see a second time it's almost 20 years old so uh we're definitely gonna get into some spoilers for this movie but every once in a while there's movies out there that just like have like the craziest endings and you know about it and stuff like i already knew what the twist was with fight club before i saw it um i already know what the twist is in shutter island and i still haven't seen that movie yet um but this movie i went in pretty much blind why did i want to watch this movie it's because it's a movie that's hailed by the horror community which i've always loved and we saw I saw the devil last year during Halloween season. And that's now one of my favorite horror films that I've ever seen. So, you know, ideally, I wanted to check out this movie, a movie that I'd heard a lot about, but didn't know too much about the twist for sure. I did not see coming, but I didn't realize that this was also the original version of a movie that came out a few years later called The Uninvited with Elizabeth Banks. Um, I haven't seen that movie, but I remember a lot of people saying like, oh, if you like Fight Club, you should see that. It's got a similar style twist and stuff. And I was like, oh, why are you telling me that and stuff? So like, you know, there's a lot more that goes into this movie versus uh, Fight Club. Like, uh, I don't want to like spoil too much and stuff, but um, we're definitely going to have to like talk about it, though, uh, to really get into the meat and potatoes of this movie, because there's a lot of buildup. It's it's a really sh like it's actually just under two hours but it felt really short though going through this movie because a lot is happening there's like a every scene has a lot of importance and stuff but how it all came together i was a little confused on too and i definitely want to rewatch it which is what you were saying also but yeah i really enjoyed this movie it's not up there up to the level of i saw the devil i'd say i feel like that movie is like a masterpiece this movie is really good and it was made before i saw the devil so like you know, it was definitely like a great like step to see what this director was capable of. Like the script process for this movie must have been a little fun. But there were some things that I probably would have taken out, but also might upset a few people like, oh, why would you take that out and stuff? Um, but yeah, any thoughts on what I just said? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I, I, I you know, it's funny is you mentioned The Uninvited and I felt like this was a movie that I had seen, maybe I had seen The Uninvited, I'm not sure. I, I felt like 
it, around the time that that film came out, I saw every mainstream horror movie. And there were these this wave of like horror movies that were very like gothic and dark, but also felt like they were, you know, ghost stories. And this film definitely has those same vibes, obviously, because the original, and I'm sure I probably did see The Uninvited, and it was based on that. Something I kind of liked about this movie was that it took elements from Japanese horror, like films like The Grudge or The Ring, that had these very strange ghosts that were kind of slow moving, but really creepy. A and this film pale, had- dark eye look that you see in those movies, yeah. Exactly, long hair and like kind of wet ghosts, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> in all white too of course yeah. yeah in all white like white makeup and this film had those and those that's not really like a korean trait so mm -hmm. much but it was cool that this film kind of maybe pioneered that aspect or kind of borrowed it from japanese horror but for korean horror in a sense so i like that that aspect of it i know that there's probably some people that you know probably thought like you know keep the those j-horror aspects in j-horror not korean horror but I'm a fan. I, I don't necessarily feel like those were the you maybe could have created this film without those elements, but it was cool to add, you know, this extra element of, of horror onto this film that was already quite creepy just from the story itself. And to kind of get into the story, I wanted to talk just a little bit about it because it, it was a bit confusing. I had to do some research even after the movie because I didn't want to come into this review looking like a total dumbass. Uh, I'm fine looking like a dumbass, but a total dumbass, that was just uncalled for. And <laughs> that was <laughs> this this video is not going to be monetized, so just forget that. But anyways, uh, yeah, like I, I thought that this movie, obviously, it's about uh, disassociative identity disorder, which is DID, which basically the, our main character believe, like almost throughout this film can kind of disassociate into the stepmother's persona, but also the persona of her the younger sister. So it, it was kind of interesting. It was, it was almost a labyrinth of a plot, essentially, that gets you lost in, is, the, is this, you know, her as, you know, herself or her sister or also the stepmother at the same time? So it, it's a lot of you not being able to, like, trust really what's going on on screen or have I seen this before or why is when this character is, you know, performing this action, it almost appears as, as this action's already been done before, almost which is cool in a way because it almost makes you feel as if you have something wrong with you or you're approaching the story as if you are the character with this dis disassociative identity disorder, which is actually pretty cool, but it, it is really confusing on your first watch, you know? You're like confused really what's going on on screen in certain scenes, but with a second watch, I, I would assume that it's gonna be a lot more effective in kind of making you feel uh, the way that they're the main character of this film feels, which is the point of view in which you're seeing. It's just that the point of view of that film or the point of view of that character is very, you know, different than the majority of point of views you see from from characters from other films. But I think one film, which I haven't actually seen, maybe we'll do on a future episode of the show, is a uh, split. I think this film is kind of reminiscent of Split because that's also a character that deals with disassociative identity disorder. Yeah. Um, like it's like we're definitely in a spoiler territory at this point. Uh, one thing that I really liked about it was that it didn't kind of end similar to like um, as I, I'm a fan of James Wan, but a lot of his movies like Dead Silence, The First Saw, as well as even The First Conjuring, like there would be like the twist ending kind of where everything's kind of explained in a matter of like a minute of flashbacks and then there's a jump scare and stuff. I like that this movie kind of does have that big reveal, but there's still 20 minutes to kind of further develop it after and stuff. Um, this not the final scene, but the scene before it, where it's kind of the last scary moment of the movie kind of was just like where like it's revealed that. So throughout this whole movie, there's like, there there's this element of like you know her like creating these situations that are happening all inside her head her 
you know, acting as if like she's her sister as well as this uh, new stepmother. But then we also have this ghost story that's going along the movie and you don't know whether or not that's real. Um, and then it's revealed that everything's kind of all in her head, but then it's revealed after. No, there actually is ghosts also. So like that was the only thing that kind of threw me off and I'd like to see more elements of too. Like what parts do these ghosts play and what were like some of the sinister actions of it. But then we also have that final scene that kind of ends back on like what exactly happened to her mother and her sister and stuff. And um, that was a strong, that was a really strong ending for the movie as well too. But um, like, you know, just like that, that was like one thing where I just like, Oh, I really need to watch this a second time and stuff. And I really appreciated that. Like I can see that like with a lot of Korean cinema, like with these horror films, like uh, the wailing is one of my favorite horror films that's come out recently. Train to Busan, the first one, not so much uh, peninsula, but you know, and then also uh, what we saw earlier with I Saw the Devil last well, later last year um, was when uh, just like these don't feel like horror films. They feel like they're just really good movies with horror elements like around the script and stuff. So like they're, first off, they're like straight up horror films. But just the fact that they're just like gone in with such great cinematography, the music in this movie, I really enjoyed as well, too. Um, like there's a lot to appreciate within this movie. Yeah. Yeah, and I think some one of the most powerful things about a lot of these films that you mentioned, like The Wailing, or I Saw the Devil, is the fact that story is key. I mean, in all films we see across the board, story should be king. It, it should be a great story in which, you know, maybe even, you know, taken down to the level of like sitting at a campfire and hearing a great story. Story should always be king, especially in cinema. So films like this that, you know, they are a horror film, but yet the story is still so good where you could take the horror elements out of it and it could be, you know, just still a great story is really what makes these films shine and what makes us talk about a film, you know, 20, how many years past this came out? I think 2003 or four. Yeah. So we're still talking about this so many years later. And we're still talking about I Saw the Devil and even The Wailing, which only came out a couple or so years ago. So you know, even if you look at Parasite, you know, we've talked about a lot of the Korean cinema in the past and how, you know, powerful it's been. And I think that's because for the most part, story is usually king and maybe not all Korean cinema, but especially the ones that make it here overseas, story has been really well done. And that's, you know, something that keeps us talking about films here, like A Tale of Two Sisters. 100% because horror, like there's a lot of movies that easily can be nominated for best picture. I like, I don't pick horror films because they're like just, it is my favorite genre, but whenever I choose as my favorite movie, I think it's genuinely because it was really that good and stuff. And, you know, like, um, I, I still feel like Hereditary got shunned. Like definitely I thought Tony Collette deserved like an Oscar nomination for that. And then like this film, like, you know, I, I doubt it was nominated for best foreign cinema, but like, you know, I would love to see some of these amazing Korean horror films like get nominated and stuff like, also, I mean, not that like American horror, like I've never been the biggest fan of studio horror films, but there's a lot of great ones that like easily could have been nominated. Like I said, Hereditary and stuff. So like there's movies like this. So where I'm just like, they're just so good. And just like, why is it getting overlooked and stuff? Like I understand that I saw the devil's very violent, very like intense and very like hard to watch for a lot of people. But like definitely don't take away from like a lot of the stuff that's like st plot wise. Uh, like is happening within that movie and stuff. So, you know, hopefully like, you know, I'm glad that like movies like The Exorcist and Poltergeist got their like, you know, high praise when those came out, got a couple Oscar nominations, but like, why isn't it happening still? I'm glad that Get Out got some, but like get some more, let's get some more out there. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that, that that's some of the power that horror has is like, the stories can be so extravagant sometimes, but it is willing and up to the public to really appreciate them. And if, if they're not appreciated, then you're obviously not going to see them on the Oscar shortlist, but maybe we'll see going forward. I really think you're right about Ari Aster, like pushing that pole forward and, you know, giving horror some notoriety that you don't see, you know, everywhere. And I hear people talk about, you know, Midsummer and Hereditary all the time where there are people I wouldn't, you know, really see, see watching movies like that. So if anything, it is getting a lot of mainstream appeal that you wouldn't hear about. And really on paper, this film shouldn't be getting any 
mainstream appeal. So that's at least exciting. And films like this, you know, with the you know the the exposure that parasites gotten you're gonna see more people appreciating films like this so i really have to say you know if you haven't checked out this film definitely go check it out yeah um you can check it out through shutter that's a great way to like watch it um love that app as i keep saying it's a weird standard definition version of the movie hopefully there's an hd version on amazon that you can rent because that's a great way to help us out too uh watch it on amazon through our amazon affiliate link that is um that's in our description box below come back here leave a comment letting us know what you thought about the movie and if you haven't already guys go ahead and smash that like button comment like james said and hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell to get all of our latest updates if you can't get enough of us here on youtube we're also on instagram twitter and tiktok check all, check all the links down below and that all concludes this week's episode tune in next week for a brand new video